When you're dealing with drums, there are some things you need to be clear about. The main issues are the right fuel, contaminants and precautions against ignition. If you use the wrong fuel or the fuel's over 12 months old, it could cost you. You could be up for an expensive repair bill or worse, your engine could fail at the worst possible time. So how do you make sure you've got the right fuel? You check the drum label to see if it's the right type and grade of fuel for the aircraft. The flight manual will detail the recommended fuel and there will be a sticker on the aircraft near the fuel cap saying what kind of fuel should be used. The fuel should be less than 12 months old. You can work out its age from the fill date on the drum. Dirty fuel, or fuel with water in it, is a serious hazard, so make sure your fuel is clean. Contaminants can cause a lot of damage. The first line of defence against fuel contamination is correct storage. They should be stored on their sides to stop water collecting on the top of the drum and seeping in. Use timber rails to keep them off the ground and secure them with chocks. The bungs should be at the three and nine o'clock positions. This helps keep the fuel in good condition and makes it easier for you to spot a leak. Refueling must be done more than five meters from a sealed building. For unsealed buildings, it's nine meters for a light aircraft and 15 meters for heavier aircraft. You should be at least six meters away from any other aircraft and 15 meters from a public area. Make sure the aircraft engine the radio, magnetos and master switches are off. No one should be on board and the area should be clear of people not involved in the operation. It goes without saying there should be no sources of ignition anywhere near the refueling operation. No matches or lighters, no smoking and no mobile phones or other electrical equipment. Phyllis and Mick Walsh from Mansfield in country Victoria have a wealth of experience in drum refueling. Well I do uh a fair bit of flying over the tiger country through the summer season and I don't want any stuff ups with um, water and fuel or anything like that and we've decided from the word go that we had to get it right and also to get my AOC I also needed to have everything right as well and yeah if you're going to fly you do it right. Like Phyllis and Mick if you're moving a lot of drums around it's best to have a trolley or lift it could save your back. Tilt the drum with a timber chock so that you can collect a sample from the low point of the drum where contaminants settle. Make sure the fuel and the drum are okay. When you examine a drum, you should uh, check that it's still in uh, good condition. One danger uh, with, uh, with drums is if they are damaged externally, the internal lining, which is an epoxy uh, paint, may peel away from the, surface of the, of, from the internal surface of the drum. This can be uh, a contaminant which will block uh, fuel filters. Check the batch number and fill date to ensure that the fuel is not too old. Check that the bung seals are in place so you know that you're getting fuel that hasn't been tampered with. Remove the seals, remove the bung, draw out fuel from the low area with a tube. Put the sample into a glass jar. Be sure that the tube and all the equipment used in fuel sampling are clean and dry. Cite the fuel sample for colour, sediment or cloudiness. Swirling the fuel will bring any sediment into view. It's best to use a water-finding paste to test for water. Swirl it thoroughly through the fuel sample. If there's water, the paste will change colour. If there's no water or other contaminant, fit the pump. Position the trolley or drum so that the hose will easily reach the fuel tank and can be moved in case of an emergency. To prevent a spark igniting fuel vapour, you need to bond the aircraft and all fueling equipment to ensure they're the same electrical potential. Bond the drum to earth, then bond the drum to the aircraft. You need to have two fire extinguishers of an approved type close to hand in case of an emergency. Don't use water, it will only spread a fuel fire. The pump should be fitted with a filter. Examine the fuel in the filter for contaminants. Touch the nozzle to the aircraft to discharge any static. Bond the nozzle to the aircraft, then remove the fuel cap. It's best to have two people, one at the nozzle and one at the pump. Know how much fuel the aircraft will need and monitor the tank to avoid spill. Okay. Once you've finished refueling, secure the fuel cap and remove the nozzle bonding lead. Then return the nozzle to the pump and cap it before removing the remaining bonding leads. 
In the unlikely event that a spill occurs, follow the three C's. Control, stop the spill. Contain, keep the fuel from damaging the environment. Clean up, use rags or absorbent paper to mop up. As part of the pre-flight inspection, it's the pilot's responsibility to ensure that the aircraft fuel cap is secure. You should also do a fuel drain for contaminants in the aircraft's fuel.